Cause love is not gonna cut it right here. No, oh, love. It used to be cute, but you know what? No more, my dear. No more. Oh, two in love can't even make it. The can planet is dying, and I can no longer fake it. Love was made for me and you. <laughs> okay, that's enough. Let me actually start this video. Hey friend Hey was not playing when she said that the collective consciousness is real and consistent. To clarify, the collective consciousness is made up of topics that are suddenly on the hearts of many. Seemingly out of nowhere. For example, the Friend Zone podcast frequently has conversations that are extremely timely in terms of what is about to be discussed on social platforms. It's to the point where sometimes it even gets a little bit woo-woo clairvoyant, if you ask me. Anyways, I had the idea for this video today on a car ride. And lo and behold, I come home and here is Khadija Mbo making a video about almost the exact same topic. I love us. Of course, my experience and the fact that I am the one making this video make the videos completely different. But I'm just so enamored by the way that we're all so interconnected in thought, in speech, in the language, in the way that we perform self. Self? What do you mean, Victory? Well, I'd like to raise a point. We are constantly performing for our friends, our family, and our loved ones. Constantly. Ever since we were young, we have been taught to act in certain ways or behave in certain manners in order to achieve desired outcomes. You stare wild-eyed while you're begging. You stomp your feet when you're mad. You furrow your eyebrows when you're confused and you want more of an explanation. And if you're African, you accept things with your right hand if you don't want to be slapped. Kimberly Nicole Foster made a wonderful point when she said, and I quote, I mean, we're all pimping ourselves. In response to a YouTube Live commenter, she is right. And I don't believe that she's being derogatory in her acknowledgement of that fact. Performances are fun, after all. That comment highlights the usage of our bodies to varying degrees as capital. There's even a real term attributed to it. Ahem. According to Britannica, human capital is defined as intangible collective resources possessed by individuals within a given population. These resources include all of the knowledge, talent, skills, abilities, experience, intelligence, training, and judgment possessed individually and collectively, the cumulative total of which represents a form of wealth available to nations and organizations to accomplish their goals. In case that was a lot, we're all pimping ourselves. This thought begs the question. In a society full of systems that must be maintained in order to keep up a sense of normalcy, what happens when something in one's performance makes the audience regret purchasing their tickets? What are the effects of non-conformity on one's livelihood, their relationships, their reputation, their lives? I only have one experience as a cis black man who often does things that do not conform to societal expectations of what cis black men should be doing and I am here to share my answer. I really hope other people contribute to this conversation in the comments below because I think this is super interesting. I do not want to generalize too much here because societal expectations do slightly or dramatically vary across geographical location. but. Stay with me as we explore societal norms and how the way that I prefer to perform self has impacted my experience. Before beginning, I find it extremely important to note that there are different types of performances, most notably subconscious and conscious performance. Now shout out to the patrons. Shout out to the patrons. 
We are pals and confidants. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And if you got three dollars to spend per month, that's a Starbucks coffee. Let's stand. Oh, subscribe to the Patreon. You can give whatever that you want. I got carried away. But yeah, I appreciate my patrons. One more thing. A lot of y'all do not know that my Instagram exists. Follow me at victory.the.creator. Bye. Video. Bye. Things that make up subconscious performance are things like furrowing your eyebrows when you're angry or having a crestfallen expression if you just receive some bad news. These outward actions are almost instinctual and they help the people around you understand what you are truly experiencing in a certain moment or time. Conscious performance, on the other hand, by my definition, is acting in a certain way or manner in which you would normally not act in order to elicit a response that you want, most likely to receive certain benefits that you normally wouldn't. For example, all of y'all pretending to be seasoned business people for that PPP check. I see you. Get your bag, friend. Or more notably, this video from the South China Morning Post of a fake socialite spending 21 days free in Beijing, China by acting wealthy performing what the average person might think a more socioeconomically advantaged person would act like. Basically, the student pretended to be glamorous while touting Hermes and Gucci bags and products. All of that to help me articulate that I exist in many different ways, for many different reasons. Being able to judge whether to act in certain ways at certain times is a part of my human capital because it's a part of everyone's human capital, whether they're good at it or not. My performance of self is made up of actions that make me feel happy and fulfilled, so it can be extremely detrimental when negative consequences are dealt to me for existing in the way that I feel is my full self. I like my hair. I like taking care of my skin. I like emoting and voice inflection. I like using mannerisms that many would deem to be flamboyant with a negative connotation. I like to talk. I do not like to chill. And I often find that that phrase is synonymous with not doing too much. It's always doing too much and never y'all doing too little, but that's neither here nor there. Doing too much. I've been told that phrase so many times that I could paste eight by 14 inches, however many inches the pieces of paper are. I could post all of them little printer sheets and make wallpaper. My question is who decided what was too much and why are we listening to them? Moving on, my experience is one that at the beginning was wrought with turmoil and self-doubt, as well as anxiety, wondering if I would ever be able to conform to the standards that were obviously set for me. Until, of course, I realized that that was simply not an option for me. Are there opportunities for friendship and platonic love that I have missed out upon because I was seen as too feminine? More than likely. Were there opportunities for romantic love that I have missed out upon? because I was seen as too different from what I was supposed to be? Once again, more than likely, am I going to continue to be my full self and exist as the person that I actually am? Yes. Will I continue to pave a way for myself with the loving and supporting community that I have built for myself after so much social rejection and taunting and just honestly straight up bullying? I will. Who I ate that? You heard the power in the- There is power! You really thought you ate? Anyways, moving on. I am now noticing that this is starting to sound like a therapy session with an unhinged teenager, so I'm gonna go ahead and start wrapping this video up. I have said many things in this video, but there are a few things that I hope you, as a viewer, have taken away from this. One, nonconformity is beautiful and there are people who will not want to participate in the grand show that we call society because of that fact. 
we should allow more space for them to be their full selves. Two, as corny as this sounds, men are not a monolith. Because although many men will never say it, it's actually tiring to have to put up a facade 24 seven that you can only let down to a certain degree with certain people at certain times. So stop it. And three, all human beings are different. Even though we live in a society filled with common belief structures, we should focus on giving people the language to describe their unique experiences instead of chastising them for being a complex human being with complex emotions. Perhaps? Now, I wanna hear from you all. What are some ways in which you refuse to conform to societal expectations and norms? Let's keep this conversation going in the comments. This was a bit of a longer one and it's quite possible that you understood none of what I just said. I'm still improving my communication, but I have victoriously finished another video. And until the next one, bye. Oh wait, I have a lens cover. Bye. Oh. Tear open the bum bum of non-gendered self-expression. Tear open the bum bum of love. Tear open the bum bum of your missus. Tear open the bum bum of your lover. Woo! Tear open the bum bum of your heart. Tear open the bum bum. Tear open the bum bum of a non-gendered world. Tear open the bum bum of liking whatever color you want and not having it associated with man or woman. Tear open the bum bum of happiness. Tear open the bum bum of success. Guys, please join me. Add, add. The first time I recorded this video, it was 40 minutes long. Uh I'm fine and I ain't got no money. Support the Patreon.